centipede always smells like fried seafood to me. I imagine that sounds strange to you, but uh, childhood is a strange thing. I grew up in a pastor's household, um, and before I moved to North Carolina, I lived just outside Washington, D.C. My family didn't have a lot of money, and it was kind of a tradition in the little church that we attended that uh, one family or another would take the pastor's family out for lunch after Sunday service. One of our favorite destinations for the host family was a, a D.C. restaurant. I have no idea if it's still around. A chain called the Chesapeake Bay Seafood House, which was really a repository for uh, various fried uh, ocean life. Uh, fish, shrimp, scallop, things like that. Yummy stuff. I, I will not turn up my nose at some uh, delicious fried seafood. We went there a lot. The place was kind of nautically themed, if I remember right and kind of dark inside. It was the kind of place that as a kid I thought was fancy, and I was intrigued by the fact that I could just buy giant heaps of breaded shrimp and eat them at will. But the most exciting thing about going to the Chesapeake Bay Seafood House was the presence of the centipede upright cabinet uh, there in the little lobby. And after I'd finished eating, and before the grown-ups had finished talking, their long, boring, grown-up post-church talk, I would beg for quarters, and slide out of the booth and make my way to the front of the restaurant. And there I would endeavor uh, to survive more than 70 or 80 seconds of the true, marvelous, wonderful, terrifying nightmare that is Centipede. And uh, since the whole restaurant kind of smelled like fried fish all the time, whenever I play it, I'm still reminded of that. And I still kind of smell it, and I'm just getting hungry talking about this. Centipede is a delight, and it is really, really hard. I wasn't uh, better or worse at video games than I am now at that time in my life, but I do think my reflexes were a little quicker, my muscle memory a little more tuned to certain things. And I would go back to that restaurant every few weeks and uh, try to better the score that I'd had before, try to hold on just a little longer. It's a beautiful game. Uh, it's difficult uh, to, to convey just how lovely Centipede is, which you're seeing in here is uh, from a, uh, an emulator from the Atari collection on Steam. But uh, seeing it in real life, it's very different. There's a kind of an ambient glow. It's one of the most artfully chosen color palettes in any video game of all time. Nothing looks like Centipede. Nothing sounds like it either. That kind of boom, 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 boom. It's going on. So many things. I think it was Patrick Scott Patterson said in, in the World 1-1 documentary. You can just hear it in, anywhere in an arcade that's going on around you. And to me, it feels like childhood joy. It feels like stepping away from the table where the grown-ups were living their lives and you had to sit and behave and going off and taking part in something fantastic. Now, the problem with Centipede, and this is a problem that certain old arcade games have, is that to play it right, you really do have to experience it on arcade hardware. Now, there are various degrees and schools of thought around this. Uh, there are some arcade collectors who are, are true purists who, share that, who swear that all arcade games should only be experienced in their original raster glory on a CRT with the original controls and an authentic cabinet. Uh, and there is some validity to that claim, um, but I think it's more true for some games than others. Some games, I think you can enjoy a reasonable approximation uh, when you're playing it on an emulator. But Centipede, no. And even the home ports, delightful as they are, and there were some, some more artful than others. Uh, actually, the, uh, the Atari port you're seeing here is, uh, uh, while pretty ugly, actually plays pretty nicely. But while there were approximations, nothing really captured Centipede, and it all goes down to that trackball. The trackball is a strange kind of controller, and an arcade trackball doubly so. If you've never touched one, the feeling is extraordinary. It is, it is tactile in an inexplicable way and the way you dart the little shooter at the bottom of the screen around with that thing and, and you have to make the most precise movements in the, with the most imprecise mechanism except it's not imprecise because once you know what you're doing you can pull off some spectacular acrobatics you're not seeing those here because i'm bad at the game and then that glow that color palette that just isn't going to come through on the film I, I i try to get it out here but you know seeing these it just doesn't do it justice it's an experience, and it's not a gimmicky experience. It draws you in, your hands resting there on, on, on the plywood, your fingers rolling quickly across the ball, pressing down on that punch back slight tension of the arcade fire button, the flashing lights, the coin slot, everything, the, the cabinet art. 
eventually I uh, had to uh, had to bring it into my home. It was the only thing to do. I I, I introduce you now to the uh, new pockets full of uh, quarter set. Uh, our, our new interview table, I think. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun to show this off. It's actually the second time I've owned Centipede. I've owned a few arcade games over the course of my life. I'm privileged in that. I've also, unfortunately, over the years, had to dispose of them uh, uh, generally so that I could eat food, uh, which makes me sad. Over uh, At different times, I owned a 1942, a Street Fighter II, which I actually uh, stuck in the student union in college. That was pretty fun. And Akari Warriors. Uh, I've owned a Gorf, which I loved very much, and I owned an Upright Centipede. And now, at last, after many, many years of not having one, I'm able to bring this in. I'm actually going to make some more stuff around this, I think, because uh, it's going to be a set piece for the show, but I wanted to show it off. But I have a lot of love for this game, and I'm going to sum that up very quickly. Some of it's nostalgia, some of it's fried food, some of it's that feeling of getting away from parrots, some of it's that the mania of trying to survive, some of it's, it's a really great game, and I'm not going to go into a postmortem what makes it wonderful here it's a game about fleas and spiders and scorpions and centipedes and strategy you have an enormous amount of control over what's happening even though it looks chaotic it's really hard it's really hard to be good at but what i really love about centipede is what taught me about life that's what a lot of arcade games old arcade games teach you about life but most especially centipede and that is that you try and you try and you try and you fail there's no particular profundity in that, but there's a lot of truth. You try, you take your shot, you invest something, a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of money. You work and you get better, but sooner or later, even good things end. That's not a terrible message, but it does tell us a lot about the world that we live in. Sooner or later, even if you roll that score over, sooner or later, you run out of steam you run out of time to play, you run out of options, and it's time for even the best things to come to an end. Humanity is both fascinated and terrified by that. It's the cornerstone of all our best storytelling, and it's the story, I guess, of, of Centipede and a lot of old arcade games and something they have to teach us. And I don't think that we have to necessarily be afraid about that, although we do have to be a little sad. I've gotten hooked on a TV show, The Good Place, that's on right now, and one of the characters points out to the other that the knowledge of death makes all, all human beings a little sad all the time. But Centipede shows us that just because things end doesn't mean there's not something afterward, another game, another try, another improvement. So that's what I have to say to you today on Pockets Full of Quarters uh, about a game I love very much. If you'd like to write to us about the games that you love and why, you can send that to mail at pocketsfullofsoup.com. That's mail at pocketsfullofsoup.com. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Special thanks to Patreon producer Robert Nieder, whose generous support makes this show possible.